Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Todd Ronan from Matt Reality Forecast. And if you like what we're doing, please share, subscribe, and send it to a friend so that Liz Cross and I can get some bigger, better notoriety. How are you doing, Liz? Uh, great. Thank you. I have never seen or heard of these pictures or this. Let's this call this part one of our cryptid investigation. So cryptids are an entity that may or may not exist in zoo zoology. And this is a picture that has made the rains and the, or the rounds and people are wondering if this picture held up by a couple of guys in the 1880s or 1890s people can share in the comments below more about it they say this is a real picture that they got of a bird called the thunderbird and i want you to know if this is a real or a fake image it's real well, is this thing that they're holding real? These are real characters, true. One, two, three, four, five, six, like say, what are it? I don't know. I can't count, but 10 guys. The image, they're holding this bird or this pterodactyl-like bird called the Thunderbird. That bird is real? Yes. How is that possible? <laughs> It's left over from the dinosaur era. But it was like they did. Okay, let's take a look at one of these guys. Let's see if we can make one of these guys bigger. Uh, let's do the guy in the middle holding the head because he's probably the guy that, you know, is is strong. He's got a crazy handlebar mustache. This fellow right here in the middle. Can we pull in him, talk to him, ask him the story firsthand out of the farmer's mouth? It was eating, eating his animals. And what did he think? What did he do? I guess let's do the guy in the middle, the center guy right behind the pterodactyl's head. What's his, what's his position? What is his job? These guys are farmers. They're cattle farmers. And, uh, pig farmers. And, uh, chickens they had a lot of different animals i feel like and i don't know anything about this picture but i don't know why like oklahoma area is coming to me sort of that area of the u.s i feel like this thing was something that was eating their livestock they would talk about it there was a lot of disbelief but then there was a lot of belief as well they believed it was some sort of superstitious thing it was a bad omen it was a sign from god and they finally trapped it they followed its pattern they laid down traps and they they actually trapped this this thing i don't feel that it is dead in this picture those guys got some chutzpah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know it, it, they, i feel like it was um i actually feel like they gave it a lot of alcohol in that picture possibly like moonshine they gave it something to subdue it but they they trapped it and they did, did they kill it, it? No, no, they didn't kill it. They thought that killing it would be because they didn't know what this thing was, right? And again, that superstition of if I kill it, bad things are going to happen to me. Um, this was very scary to them. They weren't sure. It's scary to me. I'm sort of the picture. But it's it's true. Isn't that crazy? I'm saying, are there any more of these left on the planet? No. This was one of the only few remaining ones. And they, they actually survived the dinosaur era. 
how did that happen? And was is this the last surviving member in this photo, or did it live another couple generations? No, it didn't live a, another couple of generations. At the time of catching this, there were only probably maybe three or four left. And again, that just like in our last video, you got to have that male female ratio. Um, they just naturally died out. How did they how did they survive the dinosaur era? Well, they managed to fly away from it. So things that could fly were able to survive for the most part as long as they were not exceptionally large, they could survive the dinosaur era. Now, over time, things evolved. Birds got obviously smaller. And uh, uh, he's telling me like modern day birds are left over from dinosaurs anyway. So, you know, if you were small enough or if you could fly, you, you could survive the dinosaur era. Can you connect to this this petrosaur or pterodactyl and find out what it's thinking at the time? And I don't know, does it have a soul journey? Yes, it's now a human. Uh, it's since reincarnated as a human, but it had a very short life. Uh, it made the transition from pterodactyl to person? Yeah. Yeah, we we most of us have done that. Most of us have been uh, birds and fish, especially birds and fish, um, insects, trees. Yeah, we've all been. What is that meeting like on the other side? Is he going to the pterodactyl hall, and then they say, "Have we got a surprise for you"? <laughs> Um, you know that that lifetime there as being a pterodactyl, um, it was very lonely. He knew his days were numbered. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to survive for much longer. It was a knowing that the species is dying out. He wasn't able to procreate. I feel like his parents were the last like uh, family to procreate uh he knew that this was it for him he was scared of these farmers too did wow i don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> i totally thought this was fake wow <laughs> And yeah, now we're talking to Pete the pterodactyl. Um, what is his soul journey like since becoming a human? What is he? He's had one more, two, three, four incarnations since this photo was taken. One, one as a human. Um, he misses being a bird. He misses the freedom. He misses. But he just knew that he couldn't exist like that any longer. So, you know, when we get up to the spirit world, all of our roles here are completely irrelevant. We're just a soul when we get up there. There's no, like, discrimination that I can see. Like, oh, well, you know, you were a bird or you were a, a dog or you were this or you were that. It's we're all playing a part of this this cycle and we all respect one another. Even if you have like a mass murderer that, you know, kills loads and loads of people when they go into the spirit world, it's like, oh, OK, well, you had a job to do and I had a job to do. So and it, it is very, very different. All of this 3D earth plane stuff that attachment that we have to who we actually are here on the earth plane, most of that is dropped. And the issue for Pete the pterodactyl 
he's no longer is he going to incarnate again in the next 20 years as another human oh yeah yeah in the next 20 years maybe not 20 years maybe more like 50 or 100 years but this is the thing that i've found out as well you know we have time and space because of gravity and you know that being a remote viewer, like all remote viewers know that. That's remote viewing 101. Up there in the spirit world, what takes a long time down here is nothing up there. So 50 years can be like that, right? Up there. Because there's no time and space. But down here, 50 years, especially if it's a miserable lifetime, is is awful you know that's a long drawn out time especially people that are suffering illnesses or you know poverty and things like that i mean 50 years can be it feels like 10 lifetimes but up there it's like yeah 50 years whatever whatever that means it means nothing to them up there How did he fly because he weighed so much? I mean, it looks like a pretty heavy bird. Did he just like swoop down with his hang glider wings? Um, really from like a, yes, like a, a gliding motion. Um, would only really expend the energy flapping its wings if necessary. These birds or pterodactyls, they lived up extremely high. So on cliff tops, the tops of really tall trees, um, they were very clumsy with their landing as well. Landing was not easy, which is why the farmers were able to capture him. Well, I like the idea of capturing a giant, giant pterodactyl with moonshine. They they captured, you know, like um, uh, what is it, like a bear claw trap or whatever. They they captured him that way because his landing was always so sloppy. It was almost like tuck and roll, you know. <laughs> a lot of times on the landing, it was not graceful. Whereas you see. You know, most birds, you can see them, you know, they just plunk down, they, they glide in and it's, they slow down. That's all aerodynamics. They've got that down to a fine art. This thing, its downfall was the fact that it was a very sloppy landing. And so they trapped its foot because, you know, birds and animals and humans, we all like patterns. And patterns make us feel safe. And so they, they set a lot of traps for, for him in this particular landing spot. And then in order to calm him or subdue him, they, they poured like, I think it is, it's moonshine down its throat. They didn't want to kill it. They didn't really want to cause it a lot of damage. They were fascinated by it as well, even though it was eating their, their livestock. Meet the pterodactyl. Thanks for your time today. And Liz, it's always amazing and mind expanding. Everybody, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Wow. <laughs> You're just as shocked as I am about this one. <laughs> it takes a